This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today we're going to speak about why an insurer acts in good faith when it protects its insured with a settlement, and why there's no right to change after agreeing to a settlement. An insurer's instigation of a settlement is and always will be evidence of good faith. After parties to a suit resolve the suit by settlement, one or more of the parties try to renege on the the agreement and appeal the trial court's order to enforce the party settlement agreement. The party settlement agreement required them to dismiss all claims, counterclaims, cross-claims with prejudice. In Shorewood Forest Utilities v. Rex Properties and Don Bloom, the Court of Appeals of Indiana on August 11, 2023, resolved the claims concerning the settlement agreement. Shorewood is a non-profit corporation that provides sewer service to more than 1,000 residents in Porter County. Rex Properties is a property developer, and Bloom is the sole managing member of Rex Properties. In 2017, Shorewood and Rex Properties entered into an agreement for Shorewood to expand into a new Rex Properties development and service the homes there according to certain terms, rates, and fees. Not long thereafter, Shorewood concluded that its agreement with Rex Properties was not enforceable, and Shorewood declined to participate in the project. By mid-2019, the only claim remaining in the uh, lawsuit was Rex Properties' approximately $16 million counterclaim against Shorewood for breach of contract. Shorewood sought to amend its complaint to allege claims of fraud, fraud in the inducement, unjust enrichment, and criminal deception against Rex Properties, and in March of 2020, the trial court permitted Shorewood's requested amendment. In the spring and summer of 2020, the parties attempted to settle out of court. On June 8, Counsel for Shorewood sent Counsel for Rex Properties an email stating that Shorewood's insurance carrier, Stratford Insurance, had agreed to pay Rex Properties $150,000 for Shorewood and Rex Properties to settle and dismiss all claims, counterclaims, and cross-claims in the suit. Mr. Bloom approved the settlement with the terms set forth in the offer email. Over the next several weeks, the party's attorneys worked on drafting a settlement agreement. Counsel drafted an agreement, but Shorewood refused to sign it. Accordingly, Rex Properties filed a motion to enforce the settlement agreement on the ground that the June 8 email exchange represented an enforceable agreement between the parties, whereby Stratford Insurance would pay Rex Properties $950,000, and in exchange, Shorewood and Rex Properties would dismiss all claims in the cause with prejudice. The central issue in the appeal was whether the email exchange between the parties on June 8 represented the offer and acceptance of an enforceable settlement agreement. The trial court concluded that the party's email exchange created an enforceable settlement agreement. Shorewood had made an offer. Rex Properties accepted the offer. There was more than ample consideration between them, and Stratford Insurance and all parties had a meeting of the minds over definite and certain essential terms. Shorewood claimed that Stratford Insurance colluded with Rex Properties and somehow kept Shorewood in the dark and uninformed about the terms, conditions, requirements, and payments to be made to Rex Properties. The trial court's denial of Rex Properties' motion for judgment on the pleadings and its motion for summary judgment had nothing to do with the settlement other than the fact that it resulted in a settlement agreement between Shorewood and Rex Properties, and their settlement 
rendered the trial court's prior judgments moot. The trial court's judgment then was affirmed by the Court of Appeals. In my opinion, courts invariably prefer settlement agreements, and insurers like Stratford prefer settlements. In this case, Stratford put up almost $1 million to settle. The parties agreed by email in an agreement to memorialize the agreement with a formalized agreement. The contract was made by the email exchange of offer acceptance and consideration. The formalized agreement was not necessary, and the good work of the insurer, who may not have had coverage, resulted in a solution to an extensive case and protected its insured. Even though breach of contract is never covered by a liability policy, there were other allegations that brought the insurer into the case. This video was adapted from my blog, Selma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL zelma.com slash blog. If you found this blog and this video to be of interest, please tell your friends and colleagues about the blog and the videos and let them also subscribe to the blog and the videos, all of which are available free either from my blog or from rumble.com or youtube.com by simply subscribing. You can also, if you wish further extensive detail about insurance, insurance law, insurance claims, and insurance fraud, for a very small fee, subscribe to my Substack publications or my Locals community. Thank you for your attention.